Hey, Mike. You got any soap around here? Uh, yeah, here's some right here, Joe. Oh, good. I gotta wash this stuff off my face. No, no, you don't want to use that. Come on, what are you talking about? I need some soap, no, man. No, 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 you don't need soap, Joe. Hey, will you come on with me on the air? I gotta wash my face. No, you don't want to use soap on your face. This is this has got synthetic compounds in it and phosphates. You, you don't want to put that on your face. Hey, look, I've been using it all my life. It's not gonna hurt this time. No, please, please, put that down here. I want to use something on your face here. Use a, use an herbal bar. See, this is. This has got uh, vegetable oils and coconut oil and avocado. See, this, this this is like a food. It is a food. It's a food. You can eat herbs. You can live off this. This is a food. And yeah. it's good for the skin. What are you talking about food? Food. Like like if you were in this room and uh, and you didn't have anything to eat, you could eat this. You could live off this because it's herbs. <laughs> Come on, man. You can't eat that. That, that, that. That'll make you sick. No, it won't make me sick. Come on, it's soap. No. Yeah, it's soap. I couldn't eat soap. That'd make me sick, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is an herbal bar. Eating this won't make me sick. Well, this will make you sick too. No, it won't make me sick. Oh, I, it, it will. I bet you five dollars I could take a bite of this. <laughs> come on, man. I'm sick. not gonna bet you any money. That'll make you sick, no, Mike. Darryl, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know anything about herbs. Will you come on? No, <laughs> look, I'll bet you ten dollars I could take a bite of this. It wouldn't make me sick. No, I want to do something to you. No, twenty dollars. I'm not okay, gonna I'll bet you, what, you any I'll money. You I'll bet you twenty dollars. Twenty-five dollars. <laughs> that I can eat the whole herbal bar. Twenty-five dollars. Thirty dollars. I'm not gonna bet you any money. I want to prove something to you. Thirty-five dollars. $40. Get out of here. No, $50. $50, I'll eat the whole herbal bar. Okay? $50? Oh, you're going to make some money now. Huh? Well, no, I don't want to make any money, but I just want to prove to you that you can't eat soap. No, I, I want to prove to you I can eat an herbal bar. Uh, no, I want to prove to you that it'll make no, you No, just put the money where oh, your mouth okay, is. Okay, right? $50, man. Right. We're talking $50. Well, okay, $50. I got you know. it. Just want to prove something to you to show you that... Okay, okay $50. Yeah, okay. Bucks. Okay. Right. We're there talking we go. $50 in herbal right. bar. Okay, you're going to eat it. Bye. Here we go. Jack Burns, and I am a member of the Immoral Minority, and here is your first sketch. Uh, Hamilton, would you uh, come in here, please, and uh, bring my... Please bring my appointment book with you. I'm sorry. The number you have reached has been disconnected. There is no new number. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Hello, Kremlin. <laughs> Do you have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> well, you better let him out before he suffocates. Well, Jimmy, well, what are you still doing here? Well, Ronnie, you're not supposed to be here until January 20th. And if you'd read the papers, you'd know I'm a lame duck president. Lame? Well, Franklin Roosevelt couldn't walk at all, and it didn't hurt him. <laughs> Tuesday night in my concession speech, I pledge to do my best to make this a smooth and orderly transition. So as long as you're here, there are some important things you must know if you are going to take over this office. Well, all right, I... Well, all the paper clips are in this drawer. <laughs> the uh, staples in here, and uh, the refills for it down there. Well, what's, uh, what's over here? Uh, I don't know. It's been stuck ever since I took office. Uh, rumor has it that's where Nixon kept his secret plan to end the war in Vietnam. Well, all we, all we need is a screwdriver, and we can get out of that war with honor. Excuse me, Mr. President. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, Come right in. Come right in. I, I, I believe he was uh, talking to me. Uh, Governor Reagan, this is my vice president of Walter Mondale. <laughs> Are you the same black man that asked me when I was standing in the rubble of the South Bronx, is there any hope for me, Governor? Are, 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 are you that? Uh, no. I didn't think so. You don't look a thing like him. You know, that, uh, that puts me in mind of something that happened to... Uh, my, my wife and I, when we were touring through a housing project in Watts, a uh, little boy came up to me, a little black boy. Couldn't have been any more than a six or seven. And uh, I looked down at him and said, Son, if you lay one hand on Nancy's purse, these Secret Service men will blow you away. <laughs> so, you see, there is hope. Right. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. President. Oh, Mr. George, Mr. George. Mr. President-elect, yes. George. Uh, I'm the uh, vice presidential candidate. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, gentlemen, this is my uh, running mate and vice president. Uh, uh, George Bush. Uh, George. George Bush George. <laughs> um, uh, excuse me, uh, I, I, uh, Mr. President. I, I was uh, asking directions to the office of the vice president, and they sent me down in the basement to some little janitor's room uh, behind a furnace. Uh, that is the office of the uh, vice president. Uh, uh, it's not so bad. It's cool during the summer. Well, I'm sure you'll be very happy there, George. Besides, uh, you might not have long to be there, because uh, I hear that uh, every president elected in a year divisible by 20 dies in office. <laughs> what was that about presidents elected in a year divisible by 20? Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. First I've heard of it. I swear to God. Swear to God. <laughs> you boys run along. We'll see you later. Now. Well, uh, okay. Goodbye. What are you trying to do? Blow it for me? <laughs> Yes. Ronnie? Yes. Mm. You know, I, I know I've said this to you before. Yeah. But I wanted to say it to you face to face. All right. Congratulations on your great victory. I really mean that. Thank you, Jimmy. I, I know you do. You're a good man and uh, you're a gracious loser. We've uh, said some bad things about each other during this campaign. Yeah. I'm a... I'm a... Well, I'm, I'm sorry I said you'd plunged this world into a nuclear war. I was lying. Well, I'm sorry I said you weren't fit to hold elective office. And I wasn't lying. <laughs> well, it's all part of the elective process, uh, I guess. The lying, the name-calling, yes. the cover-ups. Playing uh, north against south, rich against poor, white against black. And all for what? The chance to have so much power that with one little mistake, you can blow up three billion people. It's an exciting game, isn't it? <laughs> I miss it already. Well, I just wanna, want you to know that I, I wish you the very best. Yeah, and I may have made fun of you at times, but I've never lost sight of how important this office really is, no matter who's sitting in that chair. And I just want you to know that if there's a, ever anything I can do to help you out, well, don't hesitate to ask. Well, uh, there is one thing. Uh, sure, what is it? I think this couch would look better if it were over on the other side of the room. Would you give me a hand with that? You really think I so? Think I... Think
Hi. What are you doing? Land. What are you doing? Watching. What's that? It's a sphygmobinometer. My father sent it to me from Honduras. He's the world's leading authority on the tsetse fly syndrome. Can I play? Yeah. You can go over there and set up a hospital for the wounded. Good idea. Oh, Ed, Ed, you must be so thirsty for running in this hot sun, so I made you some apple juice. Thanks, Marcy, baby. That looks good. Here, give that to me. Oh, I love you. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh, Ed, please, come and lie with me in the sun for a little while. No, Marcy, I want to go finish jogging. No, please. What a, I love you, I love you. Want to play hospital? Okay, I'll be the nurse. I'm the doctor. Okay. <laughs> ah! Medic! Medic! <laughs> Incoming wounded! All he needs is a little rest. No, he doesn't. His legs are crushed. We'll have to amputate. Ah! Ah! You help him now. We'll put your legs in water. We'll band him everything up. Okay, check his heart. Maybe I should keep... No, I think... <laughs> Let's go over here and start a fire to the trestle while the train's parked. <laughs> ah! uh, Joe, help me! I can't unshot myself, you fool! <laughs> Incoming wounded! Oh, no! I got an extra kidney you could have. Here, we'll bake tape on your leg. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Okay, we'll do some dental work now on him. Okay, and then let's do some exploratory surgery. Okay. That's always good to do. Ah! 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 Okay, let's go fix it. We'll save you! We'll save you! Oh, his heart is still beating, so I guess he must still be alive. Oh, okay, let me check his blood pressure if he's still alive. Okay. This big amomenometer is for that. Now I can, I can go home now, I think. 
I think I'm much better now. What are you? What are you? Uh, I'm not. What? Well, I don't think I need. Oh, 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 that's my forest for my monomer. It's used to make it flow up like a. On the Friday edition, Sex Crazed Pig attacks Menachem Begin. <laughs> this is the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Good evening. I'm Melanie Chardoff, and these are tonight's top stories. Vowing to make this the best and easiest presidential transition in history, President Carter is spending a quiet weekend in the country with Nancy Reagan. <laughs> Not to be outdone, President-elect Reagan and Rosalind Carter phoned Jimmy and Nancy from their private room at Plato's retreat to say what fun they were having. <laughs> President Jimmy Carter was criticized this week by members of his own party for giving his concession speech before all the polls had even closed. White House aides said that Carter originally wanted to give his speech at 7.25 in the morning, 25 minutes after the polls opened, but they talked him into waiting until later so that only the people living in California would feel screwed out of their vote. <laughs> In other campaign news, Senator Warren Magnuson of Washington was defeated this week after 44 years in the House and Senate. When asked what his plans for the future were, the senator said he would travel with his wife to her planet for a short vacation. <laughs> Actress Vanessa Redgrave said in Lebanon this week that she would pledge to the death her support of the Palestinian Liberation Organization in their fight to overthrow the state of Israel. Ms. Redgrave added that she was not anti-Semitic, and to show her good faith, she offered her apartment in London as a new homeland for the Jews. <laughs> Following this week's election, the presidency and the Senate now belong to conservatives. And one of the contributing factors in their victory was the influence of fundamentalist religious groups, particularly the moral majority led by evangelist Jerry Falwell. Although some are concerned about the effect of these groups on the political process, we on the Friday edition feel that there is no cause for undue alarm. This is not the first time that the church has injected itself into politics. Why, just look at the Spanish Inquisition, the Salem witch hunts, and the takeover of the Iranian government by fanatical Muslims. Now, doesn't that make you feel just a bit better? <laughs> I'm Melanie Chardo. Have a good weekend. This has been the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chalda. And now, back for their second live appearance on Friday, here is Devo!
Drugs are us. What? Delivery? We don't make deliveries. I don't have anyone here. Uh, 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 all right, all right, all right. I'll have it delivered as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it.
you go and come back later? <coughs> no. You're going to say. <laughs> look out! <laughs> Did you just see that? No. There it comes again! Yeah! Oh. That was the biggest one yet. Did... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I can handle it. It must be me. Because <laughs> you would have seen that last one. I... Okay, okay. What to do? I know pills, 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 pills. Every color, every shape. I have to reorder. Somebody better move this station wagon or they're going to get a ticket. It's parked in a red zone. Okay. Oh. Somebody, please, get that bell! <laughs> I better move my car. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We're surrounded. I am taking hostages! I gotta move my car. Of course, of course you do. Of course you do. That was a movie. This is a reality. I know the difference. I can... Some bell! Some bell! Some bell! No more belt. No more belt. No more belt. No more ringing. I got... <laughs> Here it comes again. Okay, they'll be back, but this time, I don't care. Oh, oh, I don't care. I can handle it. I can handle it. Hi, I'm Michael Richards, and we want to thank Devo for taking us into a new creative uh, threshold of evolutionary talent. And uh, next week, we'd like to uh, tell you about uh, George Carlin, who's going to be with us, and a special appearance by George Thorogood and the Destroyers. So until then, good night, go out and kiss a tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're still on. Good night. Good night, Billy. Are we still on? <laughs>